What's for dinner? Hey everyone, I'm Chef Z and welcome back to my channel, Chef Z Cooks. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make Cuban style picadillo, which is honestly one of my all time favorite things in life. Now, if you're a regular, then you know that I have made this dish time and time again. However, I was showing you how to make it the Dominican style and today we are making the Cuban style and the flavor profile is just a little bit different, but delicious nonetheless. Now, if you know me, you know that I am super picky when it comes to making carne molida. I like making carne molida so that it comes out velvety smooth and melt in your mouth. So if you follow all of my tips and tricks, I guarantee you that this is going to be the new way that you make your picadillo. Let's go ahead and get started. Making Cuban style picadillo is really easy and you can actually find a lot of these ingredients in your local grocery store. I highly recommend using grass fed ground beef if you can use it. So first things first, we're going to start off by seasoning our grass fed ground beef with some freshly mashed garlic along with some Dominican oregano, but regular oregano will also work. I just like the flavor of Dominican oregano, which is also very similar to Mexican oregano. I'm adding some freshly cracked black pepper along with some kosher salt. Now when it comes to adding salt, I like to add a little bit at a time and adjust the flavor as I cook the meat. We're now going to mix everything until it's well combined and we're going to let it marinate for about 20 minutes while we go ahead and prepare the other ingredients. So while the meat is setting aside, we're gonna go ahead and we're actually going to start cooking our potatoes. So you just wanna add some water over about medium high heat and then we're gonna go ahead and now we're going to add the potatoes. Now I cut the potatoes in roughly one inch pieces just so that they cook evenly, but you can definitely cut them bigger or smaller, whatever you choose, and you can use a variety of different potatoes. I'm using Yukon Gold potatoes because they hold their shape pretty nicely. I'm now going to add just a dash of olive oil and a little bit really goes a long way whenever you're making some picadillo. I'm now going to add some white onions along with some green cubanelle peppers, but green bell peppers will also work. I'm going to add another pinch of salt to help everything sweat and saute beautifully along with some freshly cracked black pepper as well. Now we wanna saute this until the onions and the peppers become translucent. And honestly, it's going to smell amazing. Now there's a variety of different ways of making picadillo and this is just one of the many different ways that I like to make it. Afterwards, we're going to add the seasoned ground beef and we're going to brown the meat as well. Now it's really important that once you add the meat, you go ahead and you use the back of a wooden spoon or a spatula like I'm using to break up the chunks. Ground beef has the tendency to toughen up and gather into clumps as you cook it. And because we want our picadillo to come out beautifully smooth and velvety, it's really important that you smash it as much as you can, just like you see me doing right here. Now this is something that you want to do time and time again. And I find that it's easiest to do this while the meat is still raw and hasn't cooked all the way through. The clumps just break up a little bit easier. We're now going to add some cumin along with two bay leaves. And this is really going to give the picadillo some beautiful flavor, but just know that the bay leaves are totally optional. And once the meat has browned completely, we're now going to add some water. Now hear me out, adding water to your picadillo while it's cooking is really going to tenderize the meat. And this is my number one trick and my top secret whenever I am cooking carne molida. Adding the water is really going to make it nice and velvety and it's going to prevent the picadillo from coming out chewy. You may have to add water more than once. So once the water has dried up, we're gonna go ahead and now we're going to add the tomato paste and we're really going to work it into the meat. And afterwards, we're now going to add some tomato sauce for maximum flavor. Now when it comes to making picadillo, the saucier, the better. At least in my opinion, because it truly comes out delicious. 
So just like the tomato paste, we're gonna work in that tomato sauce. And now we're going to work fairly quickly because now we're going to layer in so many flavors that's going to take your picadillo to the next level. So we're going to add some vino seco, which is a must whenever you're making any kind of Cuban food. We're going to add a pinch of salt, and this is something that you can taste as you go and add as needed. So if you added enough in the very beginning, you may honestly not need to add that pinch of salt. And just keep in mind that if you want to use some adobo, you can definitely use that instead. We're now going to add some diced up Spanish olives, which by the way, you can leave home. And now we're going to add some raisins. Now listen, before you guys roast me in the comments, just know that adding some raisins to your Cuban style picadillo is really going to give it some awesome flavor and it's going to balance out the olives. But if you're not crazy about olives in your picadillo, don't worry and feel free to leave them out. We're now going to add some fresh garlic at the end and listen, Adding freshly diced garlic at the end of any dish is really going to make the garlic super nice and vibrant. Making picadillo is all about layering those awesome flavors and that garlic at the very end does just that. And of course, we cannot forget the potatoes. We're gonna add the potatoes now at the very end and we're going to very gently fold it in. Now adding potatoes to your picadillo is gonna make your picadillo so much more filling but again, this is totally optional. So as you can see, there's definitely a variety of different ways of making Cuban style picadillo. Let me know in the comment section how you like to make yours. So there you guys have it. That's my recipe for a Cuban style picadillo, which I love having with some white rice and maduros. And until next week, I'm Chef Z, y buen provecho. Man, I was hungry. <laughs> I don't know how I got through this shoot. I'm starving. This is really good. Oh my God.